Installing a switched receptacle is incredibly easy to do and anybody can do it. The obvious advantage of installing a switched receptacle is its size. If you already have a receptacle and you need to add a switch to the circuit, then you don't necessarily have to cut a larger hole in your wall for a dual box setup. The same thing can be accomplished by simply switching the receptacle out for a switched receptacle. Now you can install this pretty much anywhere in your house, but I'm going to install it inside of a uh, metal box and an extension cord for use in my shop. The box that I'm using has half inch knockouts which can just be knocked out with a screwdriver and hammer and then I can install half inch cable connectors. These are where the wires will come in and wires will go out for the extension cord and after that I can feed my wires through and start stripping the cables as needed. I fed more wire than what's necessary through the box to make it a little bit easier. Now I can use a razor blade to very gently break the surface of the extension cord. I don't want to go too far that way I don't cut the wires on the inside. Then I can bend and break this outer layer exposing the wires on the inside. I'm stripping off a little bit more wire than what is typically necessary and that's because I'm going to join these back together as if it was one solid wire and attach it to the switch receptacle that way. The green wire is your ground wire, the white wire is your neutral wire, and the Black wire is your hot wire or your power wire. I reconnected the color coded wires and that way when this extension cord is plugged in electricity will flow through it no matter what orientation this switch and receptacle is in and the original female connection of the extension cord will always have power. This will just allow me to hook up the wires now so that this switch will control this receptacle. There's a couple different ways to hook this up. Now no matter what you do the ground wire or your green wire goes to the ground screw or in this case the green screw. The white wire or your neutral wire goes to the white screw right here and depending on how you want this switch to function the power wire can either go to the opposite side of the switch or to the power side of the receptacle. Now if you want this receptacle to be powered at all times then you can put the hot wire onto the hot side of the receptacle and what that will also allow you to do is have power coming out from here it's bridged to the switch and then the switch on or off will determine whether or not this particular screw has power so you can hook this up to another device in the circuit this will always be powered and then this switch will control that other device I don't want that instead I want to have the switch control power to here so basically we just reverse what, what I just said and hook the power wire to this side of the switch the switch will on or off determine whether or not this side gets power and in turn it is bridged to the receptacle. So if the power is hooked up to here, the switch is turned on, then the power will go through the switch and thus powering the receptacle. So for me to hook this up, I'm putting the ground wire on the ground screw, the white neutral wire on the white screw, and the power wire on the side of the switch opposite of the bridged connection to the receptacle. Anytime I'm working with stranded copper wire as opposed to solid copper wire, I like to really make sure all of the strands are firmly in place and not going to ground out with one another and then wrap all of my connections with electrical tape. Now I can install it in the box, tighten my wire connections to the box, install a cover, and then test it out. Now because I connected both ends of the extension cord together before I hooked them up to the switch, the original end of the extension cord should be powered at all times, which you can see that this light is on, regardless of what direction the switch is turned. Now if I want to have some type of device controlled by the switch, then of course I can always plug it into this receptacle, and then of course control it by the switch. Now because I installed this in an extension cord for use in my garage, it was very obvious for me to determine that there's no power going to these wires before I even started by simply just making sure the extension cord wasn't plugged into the wall. However, if you are installing or working on any type of electrical circuits in your house, always make sure that the power is turned off to that circuit before you start in on the project. If you know of any situations where having a switched receptacle would be beneficial, then let us know in the comment section below. Visit 4BeerMortals.net for more information, subscribe so you don't miss the next video, and I'll see you guys on the next project.